Thanks so much, Johanna. It's, it's a real pleasure. And uh, Yuma, hello. I'm speaking to you from Nanamol Nambi country, which is the Australian Capital Territory. And I pay my respects to elders, uh, past and present. So as uh, the introduction highlighted, uh, I do have a, a please, yeah, uh, I do also have a, a group around me and um, we have 60 plus members in the Water Justice Hub. The Water Justice Hub has been established for a couple of years now. And it's really about looking at the issues of equity, justice in terms of basic water needs, but also in terms of distributional justice, um, as well as uh, who gets a seat at the table, who gets to talk. So my presentation, five minutes or less, is really about the response that we need to have to those uh, global water crises that we're currently facing. Of course, as Australians, whether we live in Australia, we live overseas, we're well aware that we live, uh, if we live in Australia, our semi or our uh, uh, continent in most of the locations. Obviously, we get a lot of water in the north of Australia, but we have to respond to the crises that are coming, not only in Australia, but globally. So what are these crises? Well, there's a number of them coming. And uh, one way to think about it is to think about what's so-called green water. That's the evaporation, transpiration, and soil moisture that we have uh, globally. Now we've re reached, according to recent authors, uh, came out a couple of weeks ago, looking at planetary boundaries. Those planetary boundaries are really, really important. If we start to cross them, and we already have crossed them in a number of dimensions, as you can see in the top left of this corner of the figure, uh, once we start to cross them, uh, we are into those uh, high risk situations and the resilience of our systems, our operating systems become uh, diminished. And so we need to do something about it. So we have to respond to a crisis by doing something and by acting. And so what are the uh, requirements? Well, um, first of all, we need to recognize that there's a problem. We need to recognize there's a planetary boundary when it comes to water, and we need to be start to do something about it. And what do I mean start to do something about it? Well, the justice aspect is key to this, but it also is about the amount of water that we're extracting, and more importantly, that we're consuming, the evaporating and tra evapotranspiration. That includes in agriculture, includes households, includes urban uh, areas as well. But the biggest user consumer of water in Australia and globally is agriculture. So if we're going to really make this a, a work, we're going to have to work in the agricultural space. And so one of the things that needs to be connected, and it hasn't been until recently, Glasgow was an exception, Glasgow COP26 uh, last year, is the connection between water and climate change. And you can see here, uh, hopefully you can, you can see that water in the context of disasters and emergencies, 24% here are related to uh, riverine floods, but there are other flooding events and coastal floods that represent a good proportion of the climate change emergencies. In addition, we add on to that the droughts, droughts in uh, the uh, field producing areas of the world, including parts of Australia. And we have a major problem here as climate is changing and it's not only going to change, it already has changed. So water has to be part of that solution and that response. And so uh, what are the things that need to be done? Well, you know, there's a long, long list, but let's just go through um, step by step. First of all, we need to have sustainable surface and also groundwater extractions so we can restore and maintain ecosystem services, whether it's be biodiversity or just simply having enough water for communities. And keep in mind that there are communities in Western New South Wales who literally ran out of water at the last drought in 20, uh, 2019. We also need to have safe drinking water. You may not know that about a quarter of a million of Australians, quarter of a million Australians in one of the richest countries in the world don't have access to drinking water that meets the Australian's uh, drinking water safety guidelines. We also need to have better planning. We have a, a Murray-Darling Basin plan, but we need better planning in terms of what we do and actually implement plans. Australia has been very good at implementing, at uh, talking about and legislating, but we've been much less successful at implementation. We also need the basics, the metrics, you know, whether it's investing or, or whether it's uh, water, we need a water accounting. We need to know what's happening. We need to know who's got the water, what they're doing with that water and how they, how they're applying it. And of course, and last, but certainly not least, 
We have the Uluru Statement from the Heart from four years ago. Uh, there's a whole set of issues around recognition of Indigenous rights in Australia, and that also applies to water and water rights. So Indigenous Australians own or control about 40% of the land mass of Australia, but they have a less than 1% of the water rights. We've got to do something about that. So let's take this forward. Well, what do we do? Well, you know, there's a so-called theory of change and you're probably familiar with it, but you know, there's a sphere of control that we can actually directly influence ourselves. Uh, but also it goes to an influence beyond our control and of course into an interest. And we're all in that space. Every one of us in that, is in that mix of that, that different spaces. And in terms of what I do and what the Water Justice Hub does, we focus on a lot of imp outputs, but we only focus on the outputs to lead to the outcomes. We think of the outcomes first and then go back to the outputs. Whatever you are, whatever you do, you need to be thinking in this space. And then, of course, we need to be forward thinking. We need to think about what's called the future current. So we are in 2022. Let's think uh, out to 2050, you know, less than 30 years away. And think of where we're going in business as usual whether it's electrification, whether it's sustainable investing, whether it's responding to water crisis, business as usual is not a good future for us as a globe and not a good future for us as Australians. So we gotta shift it. We gotta shift what that future is to something that we want to happen, okay? And we can make that happen. And that's about planning, thinking about possibilities and opportunities. It's not a projection or forecast, it's simply doing something now acting together, leveraging the influence and controls that we have to deliver a better future for ourselves and of course, uh, Australians uh, to come. Thank you.